welcome to Psychic Holistic Spotlight. I'm your host, Josie Way, and co-hosting with me tonight is Kathy Medeiros. Uh, I have two wonderful guests on a subject that we have not covered in my memory since I've been here. And it's about dreams and dream work and shamanic dream work. Um, what we have is two well-known dream workers, Catherine Rossi, who comes at it from a shamanic perspective, and David Barr, who comes at it from a more traditional perspective of studying and looking at the dreams and seeing what they mean for you mm -hmm. and, and how to make them work for you. Right, that's part of it. Um, it's also about setting, well, like you're talking about, it's about setting intentions and having fun with it and um, getting them to enhance your lives. Mm -hmm. They certainly take up enough of your time. <laughs> we, do. <laughs> we do spend a lot of our lives sleeping and dreaming. So. Yeah, and some dreams, I know I've had repetitive dreams, and they always mean something when they, it, your psyche is trying to tell you something. And I, I know one that I had turns out to have been a past life recall. Mm -hmm. And I had it as a child. I didn't have it anymore in my early adult years. And then in my 40s, I had it, started to have it again. And I was dating the person in the dream that was on the white horse chasing me. But I wasn't able to do anything about it initially when I was young because I never stopped and turned around and looked. But I actually was able to stop, turn around and look and realize, oh, that this is this person whom I care about and who cares about me. Mm -hmm. So then I realized it was, you know, someone else had told me that it was a past life recall. So I said, well, that makes all the sense in the world. Now, how, in the dreams, how can you tell the difference between a past life recall and, like, just a dream? How can you tell? Is there a difference in that? Um, it's all about, a lot of it has to do with how you feel when you wake up. Okay. So how you feel is a key to the type of dream that you had and the urgency of the message that's contained within the mm -hmm. dream. Okay. And and these it, were urgent dreams. <laughs> and it's also, dreams are personal experiences, so it's all about what it means to you. You should never let somebody tell you what your dreams mean. They mm -hmm. can give feedback and make suggestions, but only you have the final say on what your dreams mean. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. you do classes every month, you, or gatherings, mm -hmm. to yeah. do dream work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do a monthly dream circle in uh, Providence, and it's a drop-in group, and um, it's the s second Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m., and it's always amazing the dreams that people bring and the synchronicities that come along with that. Oftentimes, we'll find a common theme in mm. the dreams that people bring forward. And we have a lot of fun in, in Dream mm -hmm. Circle. We have different... Um, techniques or things that we can kind of pull out of our hat. We have done dream theater where we've acted out dreams and people have had the opportunity to um, change the outcome of their mm -hmm. dream or oh, that's talk wonderful. to um, different characters in the dream mm -hmm. to understand it better. We've also uh, done some shamanic work or what's also known as active dreaming and journeying with the help of a drum, mm -hmm. the sonic driver, to go back into a dream and gather information or, again, ch change the outcome, whatever the person decides. And we can all go back into a person's dream and mm -hmm. play different roles. What else do we do? Um, I just want to add to that. It's always amazing. Um, the reports that we get from the dreamers when they all mm. emerge from the one dream. Um, a lot of common themes, people observe similar things. Mm -hmm. um, we do the lightning dream work process, which is a quick, fun way to analyze a dream and figure out its meaning and form an action plan based on 
the uh, message that you're getting from the dream. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of fun with that too. Yeah. Now, is it like the entire group works on one person's dream, or just like kind of like a feedback sounding board for everyone's dream? We usually do one dream at a time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You find that most helpful that way in that yeah. That regard. Yeah. And yeah. some dreams are visitations from different um, loved ones, for instance, or um, teachers and guides mm -hmm. that are showing the way. Uh, Doreen Virtue wrote a book called Angel Dreams with her daughter-in-law, and um, they talk about see when you see angels in dreams, what some of the significance of it is. Do you want to? Um, I could share an angel dream that I had. Uh, it was a very personal experience, and it was a very simple dream. Um, an angel came to me, and it wrapped me in its wings, and I just felt this wonderful energy, and just a feeling like everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really understand why I had the dream at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few minutes, a few months later, my grandmother became ill, mm -hmm. and she was a firm believer in angels and working with angels and calling on them for help, through, you know, praying to them, asking for healing. So I went to see her in the hospital. She was going to have a procedure where they shocked her heart. Mm. And we weren't sure if she was going to survive the procedure. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the skills that I've learned is the dream transfer. So I had a good conversation with my grandma. And at the end of the night, I said, Grandma, I dreamed a dream for you if you'd like to hear it. And you're welcome to take any of it, all of it, or none of it, and make it your own. And she said, OK, tell me the dream. So I put my hand on her. And I said, an angel will come and wrap you in its wings. And you'll just feel this wonderful energy. And you'll just know that everything's going to be OK. Well, she went to bed that night. She woke up the following morning and didn't need to have that procedure. Her heart had stabilized overnight. Mm -hmm. And she said the angel must have come to her mm -hmm. in the night and helped her. I got chills. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Now, I have a question. Um, some of my dreams are they're very like disjointed. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't make sense, so it doesn't follow like a steady pattern. But other dreams, though, like it's like a storyline mm -hmm. goes from beginning to end. Now, like it's not like it's like all over the place. Now, what's the not that I I don't remember any specific dream now, but what's the significance of the two types of dreams? It's just that we cycle through numerous dreams throughout our night as we go through the different sleep cycles. Okay. All right, so if the, like the storyline type of dream, though, that's just one whole dream that I remember, but yet the, the disjointed one is just like bits and pieces of different dreams? Mm -hmm. And those can be some of the most fun ones to play with. Oh, okay. Um, and if you don't keep a dream journal, I highly recommend it okay. because that'll help make sense of all those fragmented dreams okay. as well. You'll start to notice themes and patterns and see similar characters and locations. Um, you'll start to see, oh, if, some, if this is going on in my life, I have this dream. And just oh, okay. you'll start so to correlation. your dream okay. journal becomes your own personal dream dictionary. So oh, I always okay. encourage someone to keep a dream journal. Mm -hmm. Yes, it becomes your interpretation. Mm -hmm. In in your experience with people that have come to you, what percentage of people, give or take, um, dream in color? Um, hmm. That's interesting. I've never really asked. Mm -hmm. I know there are people who dream in black and white and people mm -hmm. who dream in color. And I have at, had people ask you know, if there's a difference between the two. And it just may be the way that they process their information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I have frequently, and I might be like your disjointed ones, is I'll have a dream that's not complete, and I'll have to get up now that I'm older and to do what the ladies you need to room, do <laughs> uh, in the middle of the night and then I'll go back to sleep and I'm back in that dream mm -hmm. it's a continuous dream but it never resolves itself I feel like I should be doing something to resolve it so one of the things that you may want to look at is what is happening in the dream. And one of the ways that I primarily work with dreams, I, I admit I have trouble keeping a dream journal. Um, <laughs> but often I like to lay in bed when I wake up. And sort of that in-between state of waking, you know, sleeping and waking, I'll actually go back into my dreams and be able to explore it from a more conscious place. Mm. So that might be something you would want to try 
where, you know, as you're waking up, to actually follow the energy of the dream back into it and maybe mm. get some resolution. Yeah, because I, I think, I don't think, I'm almost certain, it's a matter of that I'm supposed to accept something. Because I, every dream that I have like that, that continues and continues, is that I've lost something. Mm -hmm. Usually it's a person I've lost, and a child. And on some level, I feel like I haven't accepted losing a child. And that's why I keep having these types of dreams. In all sorts of situations, mm -hmm. you know. I, I was at, um, the last one, I was at a place that I would never go to, and that's an amusement park with crazy rides and stuff like that. And I would never go to one of those. I, I, I just don't like them. And uh, I was going all through the shoots and everything, <laughs> trying to find what I lost. Mm. Sometimes in dreams, too, they um, can point to our deeper self. And if it were my dream, I would wonder what aspects of myself have I lost? Mm. Because that's another thing, too. We often find that, uh, you know, because I'm coming at it from a shamanic perspective, yes. that we have situations and circumstances where we lose track of ourselves, where traumatic fragments. experience mm -hmm. will cause soul loss. And um, so our soul parts can show up in our dreams to be mm. acknowledged and integrated within our I being. never heard that, but it makes a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. because I've just done a lot of retrieval. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I have a question. There's, um, there's a theory that... I don't know how true it is, but there's a theory that like, if you fall in a dream, you can... like. And you're actually like really falling and you could die in the dream. Is that true? I've had dreams where I've died and I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. That's and a good point. Even that, um, coming from the shamanic perspective, we go through shamanic death and rebirth. So okay. mm -hmm. sometimes those dreams are an indicator that we've gone through that kind of ceremony or process. Uh, yes, right. a an spiritual initiation. change. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. With the rebirth. Yeah, and there's been times where, like, where I've actually jumped, I was falling, and then all of a sudden I stop and I jump and I wake up. Mm -hmm. Is that just like my soul coming back into myself, or is that something in the dream cycle that's happening? Like a, like a, like a change. Do you know what I'm saying? It, um, when you're kind of suddenly jarred awake like that, mm -hmm. The brain sometimes can be tricked into thinking that what you're dreaming was real. Uh, so okay. you may be having a reaction in that kind of manner. Okay. Okay. And a good thing to keep track of is how you felt in the dream or when you wake up, because that holds the energy of the dream. Mm. And that's the, where you can actually follow that back into the dream to understand its meaning okay. and what it's showing you. Now, what's the different ways so that we can follow back into a dream to get it resolved? So as Catherine had mentioned, the you, lucid can, dreaming. you can kind of lay in bed and if a dream has a real energy or charge to it or there's a lot of emotion there, um, just close your eyes and kind of allow the dream to kind of replay in your mind and you can slip back into it. Or one of the things that we do at Dream Circle is you can have someone drum for you and kind of ride the drum mm -hmm. back into the mm -hmm. dream and journey into it mm -hmm. that way. Now, how did you guys, both of you, how did you start on this okay. journey of dreams? Yeah. So personally, um, I started through my practice of depth hypnosis. So I do uh, counseling with people. And oftentimes, uh, when people make an appointment to come and see me, I'll ask them to pay attention to their dreams. Mm -hmm. because, because I'm working um, spiritually, you know, their spirit or spirit helpers will start to come to them or their higher self will start to mm -hmm. dial in in the dream and then things will start happening to help prepare them for the session. Mm -hmm. So that's primarily how I started and then David and I got together. We had some, some of the same teachers um, and we just started working pretty well together and 
Kath gave me a kick in the pants to, to do some dream work with people. Um, for me, I was at a, an intuitive arts festival in Newport, Rhode Island, and it was 10 years ago. And I met Susan Morgan from the Mystic Dream Center, and I walked by her table, and she said, do you remember your dreams? And I said, well, I used to when I was a kid, but I don't really pay any attention to them anymore. And she really talked about how our culture is the only culture that doesn't value our dreams. Mm -hmm. And she spoke with such passion that it just ignited something in me. And it made me realize the importance of it. Um, and on the table here, we have the book Conscious Dreaming. And she had that on her table. Um, so she said, read Conscious Dreaming by Robert Moss. So I went home, I ordered the book, and I read it. And it just opened a gate that changed my life completely. Mm. Now, did you take any classes with that lady that you spoke with? At I've the studied with her, and I've done two years of dream teacher training with Robert Moss. Oh, okay. And is he local? He's from upstate New York, but uh -huh. he does workshops all over the world now. Mm -hmm. If anyone else is interested in, you know, uh, I think it would be great to, for them to come to your circle. Now, we, you do it at. Fireseed, right? Mm -hmm. Tell them where where that is. So Fireseed is located at uh, 194 Waterman Street in Providence, and uh, it's the second Tuesday of the month at seven. And David and I also uh, do workshops on dreams as well. Mm -hmm. We've done um, exploring your soul and uh, working with dreams on that and how our dreams can show us where our soul loss is and our soul returning to That's us. That's the one I wanted to go to. <laughs> <laughs> and we also, you know, we try to have a lot of fun because you think about the energy that laughter and joy brings, right? Mm. And it's a way to connect at different levels of being. So uh, we've done a dream talisman workshop. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, you, and you brought some of the talismans we that were made. <laughs> so these are um, some of the different talismans that people made in the class that represent different things to them. And the talismans, what they do is they hold a particular type of energy. So the one that you have in your hand, Josie, has to do with, you know those dreams that it's almost like you're swimming through water or like even mm. seaweed, that it's hard to mm -hmm. get through them or understand what they are. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the right side is. And mm -hmm. the left side is the clarity of yes. bringing that so that you can understand and recognize what's happening in your Very dreams. Very good choice of symbolism to, yeah. to complement the dream. So. Now I notice with this one, it doesn't have any, um, anything hanging from the ends. Does that mean anything? So that one, the person who made that one, there's a black line in the center. Mm -hmm. And that talisman holds the power of crossing the threshold. Uh -huh. from the waking to the dream state and bringing uh, consciousness back and forth from both of those places. Ah, uh, from the two worlds. Yeah. Huh. Very interesting. And the other one that you're holding opens a portal to the dream world. So you set the intention for what kind of dream or experience you'd like to have mm -hmm. as you hold the wand. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I've heard suggestions of um, actually making a dream altar with your mm -hmm. journal and putting different things in there that promote dreaming. Mm -hmm. you, know, you might have something that's nicely scented. You might have um, pictures of loved ones or angels or me. I'm Always with the angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. But you might have different things on there. Y you might have uh, religious statues mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, I know I have a small section in my home that uh, has Eastern deities, and Kuan Yin and Buddha. Mm -hmm. and. A, a variety of some amber resin and, and some other things. Mm -hmm. So it, it's become a small altar mm -hmm. to what I consider a peaceful way of life. Mm -hmm. 
So one thing that you might want to add to your altar is to um, start doing some dream incubation. So you can explain what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so you can write down your intention for your dream. So earlier you talked about um, this guy on the horse, right? Mm -hmm. and, and wanting to know who that is. Mm -hmm. So you could go to sleep at night with the intention of meeting him. Well, I eventually, that's what I did do. Yeah. I did say, you're going to stop and turn around and see who is on that horse. And I did. And I was like, oh, now why am I dreaming this? You know? Mm -hmm. And then after that, it became clear why I was dreaming it. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it all resolved itself. So you can do that with the dream incubation with any like, kind of dream or intention, for like, for like an answer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question, as Kath said, write it down on a piece of paper okay. and look at it throughout the day. And then sometimes it helps to leave it under the pillow because mm -hmm. it's infused mm -hmm. with that energy and that intention. Or on the altar. Or on the altar. Yeah and just see what comes to you. Be open to what happens. Um, you might not get your answer the first night, but if you keep at it, mm -hmm. um, within a few nights, you should get the information yeah. that you look right. for. Okay. The important thing to remember, too, is that dreams speak two different languages. We have literal dreams, mm -hmm. and we have dreams that are metaphors. Yeah. So when someone says, oh, I had this crazy dream, and I can't really figure out what it means, <coughs> excuse me. Chances are it's a metaphor for something. Yeah. And that's where keeping your dream journal comes in handy because mm -hmm. you can start to see the where, those, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where those things have appeared, you know, what's going on in your life, what you're feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I know is a metaphor is I'm always in interesting, complicated buildings. And that's a metaphor for who you are. If you, structures, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and at first I didn't understand it. Now I do. So then the next step is, what do you do with that information? How do you apply mm -hmm. that to your life? And that's really kind of the work that David and I do is, you know, using this to help us understand ourselves and. Um, move forward. And so a big piece of the active dream work process or the lightning dream work process is an action plan, you know, mm -hmm. to honor our dreams, to carry that energy forward. And we do that, when we do that, some pretty awesome things happen. Yeah. They, it sounds like something I should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> And that's one of the reasons. Yet, yet one more thing to do. <laughs> Another room on my house. <laughs> but you can easily do it with friends or mm. at work or with kids, you know, at the breakfast table, you know, what to talk about your dreams and, and what you dream that night and what it means to you. And that's why we're here and that's why we do what we do. We want people to feel like it's important because it is. Yeah, I mean, you're right about other cultures. I mean, the Aborigines mm -hmm. call this whole life that we're in a dream. Mm -hmm. And reality is in the dream time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They see it all differently. And they're very in tune with each other, mm -hmm. like we should be. And with nature. Yes, we're in tune with all that is. Mm -hmm. What do you find the biggest challenges with people, though, with their dreams? Like, like the recurring ones, or just they don't know what, it, what each part of the dream means? What do you see the most challenging in people's dreams? I think the most challenging thing is that when a person says they don't remember their mm -hmm. dreams, and then to get them into the practice and the habit of just noticing how they felt when they wake up, mm -hmm. and remembering you know, a fragment and jotting it down. And you don't have to write it out. You can draw a picture. Um, you can grab your cell phone or a voice recorder and you can record it that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be this big long chore where you're sitting there writing everything out. Um, I know people who have, they write down like a Cliff Notes version and then they go back to it 
and then see what they can remember. Mm-hmm. Fill in and the blanks. Fill in, yeah, yeah, fill in the blanks. Yeah. I, I, th- I know keeping a dream journal is important, but I don't do it. And it makes a difference. There are only a small percentage of dreams I will remember after, you know, like that recurring dream. Mm-hmm. With the horse and the hoofs. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's ready for a little bit and, there. To and the morning <laughs> so. Actually, here's a, here's a synchronicity, and this is why I love this work, because last night I had a dream that I couldn't find my way here, mm. and I abandoned my car, and a horse appeared, and a horse was able to take me through um, the proper ways to get myself here on the show. Well, I'm glad you made it here. Me too. <laughs> and your, your dream w- was not prophetic. <laughs> yes, thankfully my car did not break down. <laughs> no, that, that would have been a loss for our audience. Yeah, I would have found a way. Yeah, the horse would have showed up. Yeah. <laughs> now, to contact you, where can we contact you? You're at Fireside. Fireseed. Fireseed, I'm yep. sorry. So the website for that is fireseedcenter.com. And uh, there's a calendar on the website that has the, you know, all the dream circles and workshops as well. And I'm at yourinnervision.com, so all one word. Okay. Now, do you have um, the calendar on both of your websites, though, for the same events, or is it you guys have your own practice as well? My site is in desperate need of an upgrade. Okay. So, um, <laughs> okay. Mine's up to date. Yeah, hers is up to date. So. And but, uh, we always uh, advertise in Rhode Island Natural Awakenings as well. So yes. You can find it there. And create Facebook events. Yes, I, I've, uh, I've, that's how I've seen some of the events. Yeah. Or maybe someone will have a prophetic dream and, you know, that they'll be at Dream Circle and they'll know they'll need to come and they'll find us. <laughs> <laughs> they, they will find you. Build it and they will find yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Build and they will come. How often do you have the, uh, the workshops? I know the Dream Circle is once a month, but the workshops, how often are they? A few times a year. Yeah. yeah. Now, is it just one, one day of a workshop or is it like um, the two or three sessions? We've done mostly one day. Okay. Workshops. Yeah, so like three, three hours. Yeah, three or four hours. It's, oh, that's a half a day. Yeah. It's yeah. time to so say good night to our audience. Sorry to cut you off, but thank you for joining us. Thank you for thank joining you. us, Catherine Rossi, David Barr, Kathy Medeiros. Thank you for having us. Yeah. It, it was a pleasure, and I hope everyone got to respect and understand the need to look at your dreams because they have a lot to tell you. And Mm -hmm. here are a few people that can help you learn what they're saying. An easy way to figure out what we do and have fun is just come to a dream circle because that's a taste of the workshops and things that we do. So just come have fun with us. Have fun with your dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it sounds like a good thing. Mm. Are any of the workshops like multi layer? Like if you take one, you still learn something when you take another workshop? Or is it just the, all the same kind of workshops? They stand alone, but they interweave a bit too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So sometimes they're all different, but they're very similar. Mm-hmm. Okay. We have one minute. If there is, is there any one thing that you would like to tell people? about dreams and dream work? For me, the big thing is to pay attention and to start to notice what's happening in your dreams and also what's happening in your daily life. So a big piece of that is just being present Mm -hmm. and being mindful. Yeah. The other thought that came to me is taking action on your dreams. Mm -hmm. That's, That's challenging for a lot of people. You know, once they know what it is, Mm -hmm. taking action. And it's good to be encouraged to do that. And there's a community of people to help with that, too. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do it alone. Yes, that's true.